This is my People GT300i and I'm going to show you how to change the coolant. To access the air bleed screw in the engine bay, you're going to have to remove the seat and also the under seat bucket. To remove the under the seat bucket, you're going to have to unfasten six bolts. And each of those comes off with a 10 millimeter socket and then you're going to have to unfasten two screws. One here and one here with a number two Phillips screwdriver. I recommend using a ratchet with an extension on it. These are actually nuts. There's, there's six, the six nuts that you'll have to remove. And once you get them started, you should be able to unscrew the rest of the way by hand. Like so. It comes right off. Now that I have the six nuts removed, I'm going to unfasten the two screws. Even with the eight fasteners undone, the six nuts and the two screws, you, you still can't remove the under the seat bucket quite yet. There's a power outlet in the bucket and it's uh, connected with, by wiring to the, uh, to the frame. So you're going to have to lift the bucket and put it to the side and disconnect that wiring before you can actually remove the bucket. So now I'm going to lift the bucket and put it to the side and there's a place where it's stable and it'll stay in place and it won't fall off. Like so. Here's the wiring that connects the to the power outlet and then here's the connector that you'll need to unfasten. At the end of the connect connector towards the inside there's a tab. You'll need to lift that tab with a screwdriver and then disconnect the connector. So here's the tab right here and I insert my screwdriver underneath it and lift. And while lifting, go ahead and pull that connector out. Now I can remove the under the seat bucket. To remove the seat, you'll need to unfasten two nuts with a 10 millimeter socket. After you've removed the two nuts, lift the seat straight up. It comes right off. In the engine bay, you'll find the air bleed screw right here. This one, it's an eight millimeter hex socket. Right there. After you've removed the seat and the end of the seat bucket, you'll need to remove the radiator cap access panel, which is on the rear leg shield. You'll need a number two Phillips screwdriver and also a tool to pry the panel open with. On the right hand side of the bike, 
on the floorboard you have your coolant reserve tank access panel you'll need to remove that it's a fill up screwdriver and then something to pry it like so to siphon your coolant reserve tank you're going to have to basically suck out all the liquid um, unless you want to take the right hand skirt off and remove the tank and empty it out that way. But I'm going to use a syringe to suck out the coolant. First you'll need to gently remove the cap that's on the reserve tank. And be careful with these because they, they can become brittle. I'm going to use my syringe. And that works nicely. And I'm just going to empty it into my drain pan. There should be between three to five hundred milliliters of liquid in there of coolant. My syringe is a hundred milliliters, so that so far this is three hundred. About 350 milliliters in there. According to the service manual, there are different figures for exactly how much coolant is in the system, including the reserve tank. Um, one figure said 1.7 liters total, including the radiator, hoses, and everything. And another figure said 1.1 liters uh, capacity. So it's going to be somewhere in there. You're going to need at least two quarts of coolant when you do this job. Obviously, before you begin this job, you need to make sure your engine and cooling system is completely cooled down. Uh, otherwise, you risk serious burns. Uh, so now the next step is to remove the radiator cap. My engine hasn't been run yet, so everything's cold. And it comes off like that. On the right hand side of the bike you'll have the coolant drain bolt and it is right here. We're going to unfasten that and go ahead and drain the coolant into a drain pan. To unfasten the coolant drain bolt you're going to need an 8 millimeter socket. There's also a washer attached, so be sure to catch that. In preparation to flush the coolant system, I'm going to reinsert the drain bolt.
flush the system, I'm going to use distilled water. Now I'm going to fill the system with distilled water uh, using a funnel at the radiator neck. And it should take about a liter, maybe a little more than a liter. So it's full. Now I'm going to go ahead and start the engine and run it for about a minute. complete the flushing of the system, I'm going to go ahead and undo the drain bolt again and drain out the distilled water. Now I'm going to reinstall the drain bolt and tighten it up. There we go. The next step is to open the bleed screw and go ahead and fill up your system with uh, fresh coolant. Uh, I did a lot of research on this on the web and so I went with a product by Honda. It's called Pro Honda HP Coolant. It's a type 2 coolant. It's blue. It's pre-mixed and it's designed for Honda motorcycle engines, aluminum engines. So uh, this is a high quality coolant. Of course you can use what you like but I'm, I'm recommending this one. You should be able to get this coolant from any Honda motorcycle dealer and it costs about eight dollars a quart. You'll need at least two quarts. So here's the air bleed screw right here, this 8 millimeter hex head and right next to it you have a uh, a screw that, that tightens a clamp, a hose clamp. You may have to un uh, loosen that and rotate it so you have clearance to access your uh, bleed screw. So I've already uh, untightened it and rotated it out of the way. Now I'm going to unfasten and remove the air bleed screw. 8 millimeter socket.
There we go. There is a washer, so be careful of that as well. Now it's time to fill the system with coolant, fresh coolant. You'll need to watch your radiator neck uh, for its level at the same time while watching the air bleed hole. I see coolant coming out, but it's green. So I'm gonna keep going until it turns blue. Oh, it does full up. No, oh, I can keep going. I'm going to go ahead and replace the air bleed screw. Now I'm going to fill the coolant reserve tank with about 350 milliliters of fresh coolant. I'm just going to eyeball it through the, uh, the top of the opening here. It's really hard to see through the skirt, so uh, this is the only way I've found to do it. You can see the coolant level as it approaches the bottom of the neck, bottom of the opening there. There we go. You'll just have to look inside and manually gauge the coolant level. Now you'll want to rock the bike side to side slightly and gently to release uh, any additional air bubbles in the system. Now it's time to start the engine and run the bike, run the bike's engine for several minutes. This will purge the air from the system.
as you can see the coolant level went down in the radiator next so I'm going to top that up As you can see I still have a lot of the old coolant still in the system. It's a bright green versus the new coolant which is blue. So I'm going to try another technique that I uh, saw online and see if this works. I'm going to leave the drain bolt open and with the engine running I'm going to flush, it, flush the system with distilled water and then fill it up with uh, new coolant again. from this side it's becoming clear so that's a good sign now I think what I'm going to do is to flush out the distilled water I'm going to run the engine while pouring in the new coolant the pro Honda HP coolant until the uh, coolant starts coming out the drain hole um, and then I'm going to plug everything up and then top it off. So now the distilled water is coming out of the system See the the new coolants coming out so it's everything's flushed out now after clearing out all of the distilled water uh, I've reinstalled the drain bolt now I'm going to refill the system with the new coolant same steps as before I'm going to unfasten the air bleed screw take that out and go ahead and fill it back up with pro Honda HP coolant Now I'm watching both the 
radiator filler neck and also the the bleed hole the air bleed hole Install the air bleed screw. Tightening the air bleed screw. Alright, so that's in place. And then rock it from side to side. looks much better now. I'm going to check the coolant levels. The uh, radi radiator filler neck is up to uh, up to the top, and also check the reserve tank, and it's also at the proper level. So I'm going to go ahead and cap everything up. for the coolant reserve tank and the access cover after I put the under the seat bucket and the seat back on there's basically one more step in this job and that's to take it around the block for a couple of minutes uh, run the engine let it cool and then check the coolant level again and top it off and then you're done so I've ridden the bike up and down the street several times and as you can see it's the uh, engine temperature has come up to normal operating temperature which is good it didn't overheat which means there's sufficient coolant in the system now but now I'm gonna let the engine cool and uh, check the coolant level and then top it off if I need to if you have spilled coolant on your bike in any spot you can just uh, rinse it off with water distilled water like so.